Welcome to Palm Sunday and our entry into Holy Week. This day is always a roller coaster of emotions, beginning with the highs of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and ending with the sealing of the tomb after his death on a cross. It can move so quickly that it is hard to find a place to land and to reflect. So let's slow down for a moment and ponder the events that lead us into this Holy Week and the journey to the cross. In order to fully understand the implications of what we are marking in today's service, it is necessary to extend the first passage we heard in the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 21. Because clearly we have not heard enough scripture yet today. We began this morning with Jesus entering Jerusalem riding in on a donkey, with crowds following him and going before him to lay down their coats and branches cut from nearby trees. The crowds cry out, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! And as Jesus is entering Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Matthew's gospel continues, saying, then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself? He left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. It is important to know that this was not a benign parade or celebration. Jesus enters the city and his first act is to cleanse the temple and heal the lame and the blind, those who would be barred from entering the temple for their uncleanliness. This was an intentional, direct, nonviolent action, and it most likely was the act that solidified his later arrest and execution. In his book, Matthew and the Margins, a sociopolitical and religious reading, Warren Carter explains the powerful nature of what Jesus is doing in this gospel. The people in Jesus and Matthew's times would know that Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem resembled a Roman triumph. Roman triumphs, according to Carter, included the following elements. Appearance of the ruler with troops, prisoners, and loot. A procession into the city. Welcoming and celebrating crowds. Hymnic acclamation. Speeches from the local elite garnering favor. And a cultic act, often sacrifice, offered in the temple. But Jesus flips the script on its head. 
Instead of showing power, might, and domination, Jesus shows humility and solidarity. Jesus appears not with troops or prisoners or loot, but with the crowds of his followers. He processes into the city not with chariot and horse, but on a donkey. There, welcoming and celebrating crowds greet him with hymnic acclamation. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He receives no speeches from the local elite, but rather the crying out of children in the temple. Hosanna to the son of David. And rather than offer a sacrifice in the temple, he cleanses it and begins the work of healing those around him. This is resistance in its most creative form. And the chief priests and the scribes immediately recognize how dangerous Jesus really is. They fear the crowds that follow him, but when they hear the cry of the children, those icons of the future, they become angry and say to Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? So often, people gloss over the word Hosanna, thinking it is a word indicating praise to God. But that word, Hosanna, shouted out by the crowds as Jesus passes by, cried out by the children in the temple, and reverberating in the walls of our sacred space from our shouts this morning, it means, save now, we pray. Deliver us, son of David. Save us in the highest heaven. Jesus is entering Jerusalem right before Passover, the feast commemorating God's liberation of Israel from Egypt. Just as God heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt, now Jesus, the Son of God, hears the cries of the children in the temple. Save us, Son of David. In light of events happening around the world today, where are we hearing our children crying out, save us? How might your inner child be crying out, deliver me? From whom or what or where do we seek liberation? And how might Jesus' way, his path, save us, cleanse us, heal us? As we walk his way this week, through the anointing, the foot washing, sitting in vigil with him in the garden, listening to his last words, holding space for his empty tomb and inviting him back into the world with the Easter vigil, I invite you to reflect upon those questions. Pay attention to where the cleansing and the healing show up, to the spaces of liberation. Notice where the script gets flipped. Allow yourself to be fully immersed in the story and the rituals of our faith. You may just find it'll change your whole life.